facsimile for getting everybody all together. Um, so yeah, I want to welcome everybody uh, to uh, the future of aquatics retail, revolutionizing the customer experience. And um, to everybody here and who might be watching later as well, um, I'm Stacy Blood, Director of Operations at Blue Shark Trading Company. And today I'm going to introduce you to a new Blue Shark product that we're sure is going to strengthen your relationship with your customers and move us towards the ultimate goal, which is growth in the aquatics industry. Uh, thanks to all of our panelists that are here today uh, for taking their time this morning to, uh, to answer questions. They're going to be here later um, after the presentation for Q&A. And a uh, special thanks again to uh, uh, Emily, uh, Emily Legas here at Bluestream. Uh, she's put all of this together to make sure it's all moving along smoothly. And I think we'll be smooth sailing from here on. Uh, Frank Kudla is here as a panelist. He heads up uh, national sales for Blue Shark. He's had a prolific career in aquatics and pets and over many decades has worked at every level from owning and operating pet stores to VP of sales and marketing at Marineland and Aquatop. Uh, Frank Garner is also here with us today. For nearly 20 years, he's been the owner and operator of Frank's Tanks in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, he's a very well-known and visible figure in the reef hobby. He's also the manufacturer of the leading Aptasia control product, F Aptasia. And finally, Ken Rapp, he comes with a successful career in entrepreneurship and enterprise startup and direction, and he acts as CEO of Blue Stream Technologies. Now, they're all gonna be back for a uh, Q&A later. And if you have any questions, just uh, post them in the Q&A. Just put them in there at any time and we will get to them later. And so we'll go ahead and just start. So Blue Shark Trading Company is the new name of the innovative R&D company behind the industry's most effective and trusted water quality products, including the world's most trusted cycling product, Colony. Now, with more years of experience producing and distributing biological formulas, uh, more than anyone on earth, we've been in a very fortunate position to be able to see startup, guide startup, advise in a wide array of water quality and life support issues. From systems of say 10 gallon home aquarium to massive industrial waste facilities like JBS in Brazil. Our products have been used to secure stress-free transit uh, for just one small pet goldfish or to hundreds of fish with flying sharks of Portugal. We've cycled out entire public aquariums in just a few days uh, at Sea Life Sanctuaries. And we've also regulated organic waste at the country's largest live cricket producers, Timberline Fisheries. But where our most significant philosophy resides, and it always has been, is in the care of new aquarium hobbyists. Now for a hobby that's traditionally suffered uh, a large failure rate over time, um, we're always aiming to turn many of those failures into success, and we want to do that as much as possible. So we felt that just simply doesn't have to be, and nothing has been more rewarding than having the opportunity to like engage with struggling beginners and then you know get them successful, get them the knowledge, and then watch them turn that frustrating scenario into a joy that lasts years and years. And I know many of the dealers here feel the same way to watch that to watch that happen, and that's always been our our primary goal. But that's the thing uh, that that's what's key to growth in the in the in the aquarium hobby, and that's what we're aiming for. And every single Blue Shark product is developed with that goal in mind. So we deliver the basics that secure that successful beginning. You have to get that so you can have the ongoing care and maintenance and joy continuing. And no other product has done that in our stable than Colony, um, which goes right to the most common failure, which is an aquarium cycling. You get them cycled statistically. They're going to be with you a very long time, probably even have more than one aquarium. Paradigm is our innovation. There's not another product like it. It detoxifies tap water and it provides vitamin C stress for, uh, reduction, which is essential for fish transport. And then triage, uh, it, it responsibly addresses ammonia emergencies with Agent Green and Outbreak. They work in tandem to keep unwanted guests out of your aquarium. So that's why today, uh, you know, in, in an industry where there's often spurious innovation or uh, redundant innovation, we want to innovate meaningful shifts in the hobby. And that's why today we're showing you our new product, which is Blue Shark Journey. So Blue Shark Journey is our latest difference maker. It's an SMS active assistance platform. And we've developed this to track each aquarist's unique experience and needs. 
which is uh, very different than your, uh, like if you have email blast, you have an email list, you send emails out, coupons, other customer retention tools are out there, but none of them really allow you to do what Blue Shark Journey does. This one speaks directly to your customers and it sends them timely tips, reminders, um, plus an ever-growing uh, keyword directory of instant help tools that we're always developing. Uh, but I talked about growth and I and, and I want to stay with that because that's also the goal of this product. Uh, that's where this gets good. Um, Blue Shark Journey doesn't just help your LFS and your customers with Blue Shark products. Okay. Um, the vision is much bigger. What we want to do is make the, make a system that's adaptable to you so it'll grow your sales uh, across your entire LFS, not just with Blue Shark products. Uh, it, it will also be kind of like a, an, an employee. Okay. So it is a bigger vision. And uh, at this time, what I would like to do is send it over to Ken Rapp, and he's going to explain uh, how Bluestream has developed this innovative system and give you a nice introduction. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, Stacy, And uh, thank you to you and Frank and Frank for being part of uh, this program this morning uh, and to Bobby for advising us uh, on, on our entire journey. I welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ken Rapp. I'm CEO of Bluestream Corporation. Um, what I'm going to do is take you through the problem that, that is acutely out there for businesses um, and how we're solving it, uh, what our solution is, and then a little bit about a, a, a I'll touch on the economics and the business impact of, uh, as Stacy said, creating successful uh, aquatic hobbyists. So Bluestream is a company that's all about product ownership. So we're, we're not, what we're not is the pre-sale customer acquisition type of system. Uh, there's plenty of solutions out there, points of sale systems, inventory systems. What we're all about is after your customer buys one of your products or, or an aquarium and um, some new fish and all of the accessories, helping them, having a platform that's super easy to set up and run uh, that will connect you directly to that customer uh, around the ownership experiences of the product lifecycle. Now, if we look at, um, if you could, Stacy, move to the next slide. If we look at uh, what's going on in, at, a, at a high level, uh, the, the customer acquisition cost is skyrocketing. And further, uh, it's the, the LTV is, is falling. And the reasons are, uh, first, due to the new regulations, precise target marketing is a thing of the past. It's very hard to do. We need permission. Uh, so the, the regulations are changing. But just as important is that the, the online buying capability, all of us can go online and, and search on a new product or any product we want to buy and get millions of hits. And so the, the online buying is a great thing in one sense, but on the other hand, it's commoditized the buying process. And so that erodes LTV. So you have these two opposing problems, all driven by the, the all driving customer acquisition cost. Uh, and, and therefore, the answer is to retain your customers. So next slide, please. So according to McKinsey, uh, retaining customers is the answer and personalization is the way to do it. And so as you can see here, there's a couple of KPIs that, you know, loyal customers are worth on average 10 times as much as their first purchase throughout their lifetime. Um, and the fastest growing companies are, are driving revenue, 40% um, of their revenue through personalization. So think about after sale becoming the opportunity to connect you and your customers to you around this product experience. So next slide, please, Stacy. So Bluestream has built the product assistant SaaS platform, which is software as a service meaning that you can simply turn it on and run and uh, it, you pay for it as it goes on a monthly basis, depending on your connected customers. The product ownership data 
uh, that our customers experience are driving retention, revenue, and lifetime value. And what we're most proud of is once a customer, one of your new product owners gets on a journey, which Stacy will take us through, they, they love getting the help from you around how, to, how they initially unbox and set up their, their tanks, um, and then how they enjoy and, and feed and care for their uh, aquariums and their fish, and then how they maintain any of the accessories that, that are required. And so the retention rates we see are 90%. Uh, the revenue through offering the right accessories and, and support at the right time grows by 20%. And LTVs, we see 5X LTVs routinely. The way the product assistant works is it's actually a, an interactive dialogue. So it's, it's an adaptive messaging platform that, that interacts with your customer around their skill level, around the environment that they're in, and around their usage volumes. So for example, a new fish owner um, or a new aquarium, a new aquarist will get a different set of messages based on their personal needs versus a, an experienced aquarist. And so this product assistant platform is all about adapting the messages to be specific and personalized to the consumer. Um, and it's event-based. So another important uh, point here is that it isn't a, uh, a forward-moving uh, time-based system. It actually can move backwards depending on the answer to questions. And we're gonna, uh, Stacy's gonna show an example of that. So what Bluestream's all about is helping connect you to your customers through the product experience life cycle. Next slide, please, Stacy. So here's a little example where, where Bluestream is uh, very active in the musical instrument and pet industries and now expanding to other industries. But here's an example of, uh, of a dog ownership uh, powered by SMS text engagement. And you can see on the, what we call unboxing and then usage and then care and maintenance stages of product ownership. Here's someone got some supplements for their Labrador um, and they're a first time uh, person who, who's never had the supplement before. And we find that out and immediately can then actually take that instruction that's in on paper or the side of the supplement and turn that into a digitized two-way interactive dialogue. Sometime throughout the lifetime of owning a Sparky, um, the, the joy of owning Sparky has lots of touch points around the, the experience at what we call the experience around that life cycle. So here we've asked, um, you know, Sparky has, ma has, has Sparky mastered the puzzle toy, uh, et cetera. So what you see here is continuous lifetime engagement between automatically from Bluestream's cloud between you and your customer throughout the unboxing usage and enjoyment of a product and taking care of it in maintenance. And that creates all the touch points available to engage. The data is incredible because now you really have the, uh, the, the information and data about how well your customers are doing and you can make decisions to help your customers automatically. You can, you can look and see um, how's the water quality by asking questions. And you could find all the customers out there that may have a water quality issue and then engage with them around that. You could see all your beginners and maybe offer some training courses or a, an online webinar to help them get educated around a particular type of fish in a particular type of aquarium. And, and, and you guys are the experts on that, but all of that data becomes right at your fingertips. In this case, how old is your dog? And our customers who are in the uh, using our platform in the pet industry might drill in on more mature dogs, 12 years and older, and very specifically segment that audience to be able to run campaigns and, and um, cross sell and upsell opportunities to just those relevant uh, prospective customers. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned earlier, it's a two-way dynamic messaging engine. 
And it's all about personalization. So here from the product ownership journey, you can see that each customer gets their own next message. And I, I wanna just tip my hat and say, great, amazing uh, expertise and, and advice that Bobby and Stacy brought to Bluestream on this front, starting from uh, really having the ability to engage your customer from day one. So I get home, I put my aquarium on my kitchen table, and then I fill it with water, and now I can't move it. Uh, and now th that's one of the uh, erosions of my confidence in being able to have a great experience with my new, my new fish. And so the ability to step through the, the instructions, the unboxing, the best practice, um, Stacy, Bobby, and Blue Shark have put the templates together and made them available to all of us uh, in the industry. Next slide, please. Great. So then that product ownership data enables us to say, okay, if someone's struggling and all, all the interactions are recorded. So up in our cloud, we're tracking the data on who clicked on which link, who clicked on an answer to a question that they're struggling or who's having success. Um, you'll have at your fingertips and, and be able to help your customers with their product ownership. So the data becomes extremely powerful for understanding your customer behaviors and, and advising them with what, what's called zero party data. So they, they're providing you with zero party data because they want to. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're truly helping them with the hobby, they ultimately, it's called zero party data when they're, they're offering to give you the data. And we ask that question right up front um, and then continue to ask how they're doing. So you've got data that really is helping you connect with that customer around their specific personalized needs. So you have usage data, ownership data. And I think of it like a Carfax when I've gone out to buy a car, I always check the Carfax this is analogous to a Carfax, where you now have the ability to see from the day that you started engaging with a, with a new aquarist or even an experienced one, you've got all the history there on all the interactions that you've had with the customer. And that data then can drive not only recommendations and campaigns where you go out and maybe have a, a phone call campaign or use some selling and marketing pre-sale campaign systems to do broader outreaches, but it also helps with product development because you'll identify areas where your customer needs help. Next slide, please. So last but not least, just a comment on this data being the fuel for AI around unboxing usage and maintenance. We are not uh, comfortable with what's going on in the AI world right now directed um, unconstrained un to or uncontrolled to uh, end consumers. But what we are all about is to be able to use the data to create salient and relevant advi advice and recommendations back to your customer that are in your control. And so we see four places uh, that, we're, that are in our laboratories that we're working with AI to try and create better experiences but it will all be controlled AI rather than just uh, open-ended questions that customers can, can search on uh, so that we do keep them with the, with the uh, barriers up. We keep the questions and the answered answers relevant to you and your customer. Next slide, please. So last but not least, what's been incredible for Bluestream is to help companies grow not only help the customer, our, our customers, consumers be successful and, and grow that way, but also to help the business grow with our customers. And what you see here is, and, and we are happy to work with you all offline, anyone who's interested um, in running through a model specific to your business. But what you see here is a very simple calculator that we've put together with some customers where there's uh, a 
cohort of a thousand customers, uh, consumers, total customers in the time period says 1000, and the average annual revenue is $500. And what we routinely see is that at least 50% of the hobbyists don't make it past the first year. And so the, the row in that upper green box below the 1000 says 50% of the customers will churn out or not be retained. And then that drops throughout the next five years. And what that says is that there's for a thousand, in this example, for a thousand uh, consumer uh, cohort, you'll be seeing 250K down to 150K over five years or a total of a million dollars of revenue over five years. If you were able to reduce that 50% churn rate by even 25%, that's what the gray box is talking about. So by incrementing the number of retained and successful aquarists by even 10 to 12%, the, the economics are compelling. You can see over a five-year period, it's a 51% in improvement in the revenue. And it's also, you know, so from a million dollars, it goes up to a 1.5 million total. And so that means the ROI and payback are unbelievably fast by engaging with your customers and your consumers and helping them be successful. There are some other strategic reasons to engage your customer, um, including what I think uh, Blue Shark has done here is to demonstrate creating a brand that is a differentiated brand out in the marketplace by helping customers. And that's what the Blue Shark journeys are all about. Um, and I, I think there's huge, personally, I think there's huge brand equity and market share opportunity to do exactly what Blue Shark is doing here. In addition, uh, it, it could be that you wanna drive referrals, could be that you wanna reduce service costs because now you're preventing some of the, uh, the churn or the, or the questions coming back to you. Uh, by, by learning from your customer base and then offering tips and recommendations before they become problems. And then we are very proud to, to have an unboxing program that drives five-star reviews. We call it our five-star program. And it's all about that onboarding from the first unboxing and setup uh, all the way through a satisfied and successful uh, initial customer to then go leave reviews that drives up five-star reviews. So with all that said, I'd like to, um, Stacy, you can advance the slide maybe to the thank you. I'll thank all of you for joining. Um, thank Frank and Frank and Emily, thank you for helping coordinate uh, this meeting and, and Stacy and Bobby for your leadership in the space. And we look forward to working with any of you who'd uh, like to learn more and work with us uh, on a go-forward basis to retain your customers. All right, well, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much for that. That's um, what we'll do now is we'll take everything that Ken just said, and I'm gonna show you what Blue Shark has done uh, with this journey, kind of give you a look at you know what it looks like. So what we've done is an active ta uh, tank startup assistance. This is one of the journeys that we created. Another one is ongoing care and maintenance. Uh, we've also got a keyword info directory, uh, timely pre-solved messaging. I'll kind of go over every one of those things. So uh, whether it's online or in a store, the customer can link up with, uh, with our journey um, online at a form, or they can scan a QR code in store. Uh, for instance, uh, Frank at Frank's Tanks has a QR code right there that you can scan to get, it'll take you right to the journey, choose the product you want. And we, we, we do this because we want them to start at the place they're currently at in the journey so we know what we need to be uh, discussing with them or what they don't need. So that's that's part of the value of this program is, you know, valuing their time uh, and, and their attention. So from there, they will get on this journey, they'll get all the information they need on how to use our products um, in context uh, of our products. And all the touch points are going to be relevant to that. Now, what's good about that is that we get to control all of the information that we want them to know to be successful. We reduce the chances of them drifting into online space and finding bad advice or, you know, of how to use a product they didn't find what they're looking for. And I know a lot of dealers will have this issue too. And you want to be able to control their experience. That's why they're in your store. That, that's why they're coming to you. So you want to be able to make sure that they're successful. 
Um, so if this happens, you know, we can lose that hobbyist completely and, and we don't want to do that. You never really know when you lose them, you don't know when or why it happened. You just know you lost them. So we want to ensure that they're successful. Um, and we can see in this particular screen right here, if you, if you can read it, this touch point was sent to somebody a week after they cycled the tank. And we know that because there is a, there is an opt-in to, uh, tell us when their tank is cycled. Congratulations. So about, a, you know, about a week later, we'll send a message that says, Hey, um, you know, it's been a week since you cycled. Um, are you experiencing any cloudiness? And of course this would be the famous bacterial bloom. So we want to get ahead of that. If they say yes, they're like, oh, wow, they knew that. Uh, so yeah, it is actually, now that you say it is getting cloudy. So we're already ready for a response to that and to have them deal with that in a way that's going to uh, ameliorate the situation. So it's that's kind of our pre-solve situation. So, you know, it, it, your story, you know, all of you have done aquatics for a very long time, whether it's Frank Garner or myself or any, any anybody that's done this a long time kind of knows how this goes. So we take all of our information Let's get the information to them uh, before they have a problem. So that's kind of uh, that's that's the uh, the objective there. Um, in the Blue Shark journey, we've been working on this a while. This is a very brief timeline of the, all the things that we've been able to add and develop with Blue Stream, which has been really amazing to work on. It's it's been awesome to work on something like this at the beginning and kind of you know just uh, help with ideas, uh, get everything functioning from timed messages to rapid dialogue, to keyword directories. Uh, we're just constantly moving up. We've got dosage calculators that we're working on, all, all kinds of good stuff. So we've been working on this for a good while. So it's it's really cool to see this take shape and uh, get this out in the wild. Here's kind of what the journey looks like. This is just a short video that shows an interaction with the journey. Um, so right here, somebody has taken advantage of the, the keyword directory. If you hit pound DIR on our journey, you get a directory of things that you can learn. And so one of them was hashtag sick. They think their fish is sick. So we'll get a, a link will pop up to what we call our blue papers at our website. We take them right to our website and then we start leading them down what to do about being sick. Here's another one. Uh, maybe this is later their tank is cloudy and they remembered from the beginning, oh yeah, the cloudy thing. Well, there's another touch point with a return about being cloudy and uh, the bacterial bloom field guide for colony, all of these, and we can build in new keywords. So this is how they can experience your store and your, you can help them in their adventure the way you want to help them. And when they're successful, they love you. And that's what it's all about. And when they love you, they're going to, we're, we're going to go to the hobby. So, so that's what, um, uh, what this does, um, you know, being able to add fish now, being able to get the tools working, provide them with good information. Um, and that's really what it's all about to have them have a really great experience. And so you can have an easier time at, at the LFS and maybe, uh, have, have some tea or coffee. So anyway, it's, it's a totally adaptable journey. It's adaptable to you. You control their experience and, um, that's the overview. And I think we can throw it over to Q and A, I think. Great. Well, thank you, Stacy. Um, Everyone, I'm Emily Lagasse. I'm the VP of Marketing at Bluestream, and I'm here to help moderate our Q&A. As a reminder, if um, any of our attendees have questions, you can drop them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll do our best to get to them. And if we don't, we'll be sure to follow up with an answer to you directly after the webinar. Um, well, I, I'm just feeling very inspired by Stacy by all of your creativity and the way that you approach developing your products as well as the relationships and experiences you have not only with your customers but also with your dealers. Um, so I think you know hearing from you and hearing from Ken about how Bluestream and Blue Shark are partnering on this um, to collect data that is empowering their customers to succeed is um, is just such a great message. Um, so to start with our Q&A, Ken, the first question is for you. And the question is, how would someone get started? How much time would it take? And, you know, who who takes control of what and how much effort is involved? Well, I, I thank you for the question. Uh, I have to admit that Stacy's made it really easy for, for us <laughs> because, Stacy, you, you know, your leadership here, you've built the templates for unboxing, enjoyment, and maintenance and care. And so, you know, 
I know Frank and Frank have given you feedback and given us feedback, but you, you have really driven the Bluestream platform to the point where uh, we have a library of templates available. And I think for anyone interested, it's a, a few minutes of learning how to edit the, uh, the templates and away you go, start adding your, your customers as they sign up and as they become new aquatics, Aquarius. Right. And our next question is for Frank G. And that question is, what would you tell hobbyists who came into your store six months after their first purchase? Well, first thing I would tell them is it's a good thing that you came into um, this this wonderful um, hobby with me. And the reason I sell that, the reason that I say that is because every item that we sell in the store we also sell with that customer ret retention. So there are a lot of places online where people where people go. There's some of their some some of them, their favorite places to purchase um, are places online. But when you come into a local fish store, we're the ones who normally get the person into the hobby. So we also have to be the ones to um, to keep them in in the hobby. So um, yeah, I would definitely tell a customer, yeah, come hang out with me. And 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 of course, that question is dependent on upon a couple of things. First of all, how often are they in the store from the time that they start in, uh, to that six month period of time? But um, one of the things that we do, like I said, we sell customer service, we sell retention, um, and I think that all of us local fish stores, we have to get on the same line, we have to get on the same page, and understand that uh, on store on uh, online stores are there just for the business part but we have to get people into the hobby and we have to keep them in the hobby and um there's nothing more than a well-researched local fish store to do that excellent thank you frank and uh stacy this next question is for you and i think we we got a little bit of insight into this answer uh, throughout the presentation but it, it would be helpful i think to hear some more details around what you think the biggest challenges a new hobbyist would have or encounter? Oh, yeah, uh, there, it's kind of a tandem situation there. I would say probably a common, a few things, probably a combination of kind of like as Frank was saying, finding the right partner to start it with that's gonna send you down the right road, uh, knowing what products you really need and don't need because you know a lot of times a hobbyist will walk into an aquarium store and if there's tons of products and the layout does not look reasonable they might walk right back out and look at that and think man i have to have all of this stuff man i don't know about this yeah it's intimidating from the get-go so knowing what you really do need and making this simple and how to use them uh to because this can work a hundred percent of the time if, if we check all three of those boxes there's no reason anybody should ever not have success getting started. So um, I, I, I would say it, it probably first starts with that first interaction with a quality LFS with a store and to get them down on that road because they're going to need help and they're going to need that guidance. Right. Yeah, it sounds like it's all about finding the right partner, the right products, and having that partner make using those products as simple as possible, which you've certainly outlined very well in your Blue Shark journey. All right. Next question we have is for Frank K. Frank, we'd love to hear um, some of the problems that you see dealers facing right now. Well, in the dealers that I talked to, and I talked to a lot of them over the last, especially over the last uh, last two or three years, including during the pandemic, and uh, a lot of the challenges they face are the same challenge, or many of them are the same challenges I faced when I owned stores back in the 1980s. But there are a number of challenges that are new. Uh, and are probably outside of the purview of this uh, webinar. I'm not going to discuss animal welfare concerns, supply chain issues, the high cost of operating a brick and mortar store, and the internet. They're all topics for another discussion. I mean, it, it, would, it would take hours to go through those, but those are some challenges they're facing. Um, but some of the common challenges, and they're the same challenges that I had back in the 80s, is one is, uh, is a lack of expertise in the associates. There's a need for expert knowledge, the staff needs to be well versed in handling the different species and products, the dietary requirements, the habitats, um, compatibility with other species. And this really presents two challenges. And I think Frank touched on some of them is one is finding the right people. It's hiring uh, uh, the um, 
uh, the ads for uh, the job sites on on uh, television that you see where you post a, a job and within 24 hours you've got 10 10 applicants um, it's a little bit <laughs> a little bit deceiving it doesn't quite work that way so the first big challenge is is finding the right people a lot of times that th those people will come from your customers themselves um, especially the younger customers and uh, and then once you've hired the right person you need to have a robust training program and that's a challenge that takes a lot of time to put together a training program. That's where this, uh, where the Blue Stream service, the Blue Shark Journey, it's helpful because you're kind of getting an expert um, without having to hire an expert. Uh, or, or technically, I guess you're hiring an expert, but uh, you don't have to have one, uh, one necessarily on the floor or on the phone with somebody at home all the time. Uh, the next thing kind of ties into the lack of expertise is just customer education. Many of the customers are novice aquarium owners. And uh, I believe, as Ken said, about 50% of, of new aquarium owners drop out within the first 12 months. I, I think it might even be higher than that. Um, it, it's, it's probably gotten a little bit better since Walmart's kind of gotten out of the business because there was a very high dropout rate with uh, with Walmart here in the United States. But uh, you have to ensure that the customers are educated about cycling the tank. Um, that's, that's where some of our products come into play with uh, Paradigm and Colony. Uh, the care and maintenance of the aquarium is important, understanding what the creatures that, 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 that uh, what the creatures require within the environment. And doing all this education Education is is time consuming. It is it is time consuming, but it is part of the job. And I just encourage that uh, you exercise patience with your customers, and you encourage them to have patience. I think that's one of the things that a lot of new new aquarium owners lack is patience. They just spent uh, several hundred dollars on a uh, new aquarium. They want to have fish in it as rapidly as possible, and it can be done if they use the right products. But uh, they, they, the, the first day that they set it up, they're not going to uh, uh, be able to stock the tank to its full capacity. And uh, counseling them on that is, is good for two things. One, it makes them more successful. Two, it brings them back to the store. Buy a few fish, come back next week, buy a few more fish, visit me on a regular basis. Um, the other big challenge that's out there right now, and this really ties to what's been talked about, what Ken spent a lot of time talking about, is since the end, end of the pandemic, foot traffic has really slowed. Here in the States, pet stores were allowed to be open when other businesses were closed. So the foot traffic in pet stores was really dramatic and we had a big bump in business. Now the challenge is that now that's slowed down quite a bit. It's kind of gone back to uh, 2019 levels. It's how do we reach customers with your message? And uh, you know, email is one thing that is used uh, as we know with email, even in our personal usage that the click rates are low. The, uh, the, the, the open and click rates are low. I mean, the follow through just is not there. Uh, you're not gonna snail mail anything anymore to somebody. And then you can also en engage social media companies, but they're kind of iffy and you really need to have a large advertising budget. So I think, the, uh, it, I think this might be the most important aspect of the Blue Shark journey format. You reach them through text, through SMS. Text rate openings are over 90%. And that's where the Blue Stream and Blue Shark journey services really come into play. Excellent. Thank you, Frank. I think we're hearing a lot of the same themes about how important expert help is to helping these hobbyists succeed as well as the dealers. Um, and uh, Ken, that might be a good good time to ask you how much it would cost for someone to get onto Blue Stream. So I'm happy to answer that question, but I got to make a comment about the other speakers. You guys are awesome. Um, and it, it really resonates with me. We, we have a customer who calls herself, uh, she has a business, she calls herself Snarky Nancy because she wants to have her voice to her customer once they become a customer. And you just sort of really triggered the combination, you know, of what Stacy and, and Frank and Frank, you guys just said that that's the beauty of, uh, of personalization. It, and, and what we all we've done is created the ability to set that up once and institutionalize it and you can continue to have a personal relationship but you're going to supplement it with the with your voice to your customer about what they need at the right time it creates incredible loyalty and retention um and then you know all the uh, yeah i really believe do the right thing and 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 all good things will happen all good things happen if if you do that uh, so uh, to answer the question directly emily it's obvious some, that someone was going to ask that question what does it cost so we only charge, our, our platform charges uh, when you have a messaged customer in, in the course of a month. 
And so it's really, ba it's really based on the meter. So think of it in terms of if, if you have a customer who isn't getting messages because they're in between or they're in a cycle of ownership where there's not messages going out, you don't have to pay for it. So it's a, it's, it starts somewhere on a dollar a month per active customer is what we call it, a, a monthly active customer. And um, it's, it, we, you'll track all that in our cloud. You can see all the active customers, who's engaging and who isn't. And even like you, what's, what's cool is when, when your customer's engaging, it's driving that retention, it's bringing them back to your store and it's helping you grow your business. So we actually look at it that way. We are, we are in, we want to help you grow your business and we don't want to get paid unless we're helping you grow your business. Right. Frank G, we have a question for you. Um, how important is staff interaction with customers and how do they find the information they need to educate customers? Well, well, well I'll tell you that the interaction between the, the store staff and the customer is, um, is very important. In fact, I can I can kind of give you a little bit of an example about that. A few weeks ago, I pulled up to my store, and anytime I'm anytime I pull up, if I see somebody walking out, whether they know me or not, I'll I'll, I'll kind of greet them and let them know that I'm the owner of the store. And um, a, a few weeks ago, we had a we had a, cu a customer and his wife. They were walking out, and 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 I greeted them. I got out of my vehicle and I greeted them, and before you know it, they walked back into the store. Before they left the store, they spent 300 and something dollars. The problem that we had in the store at that particular time was I have an employee who is responsible for their aquariums looking really, really good. Our our store is really clean. Stacy will tell you a little bit about that. We keep a very nice looking store. That's what that employee does. But his interaction with the customers has been poor. He's just in there cleaning tanks. So we're working with him right now. But I went back in that store. By the time the customer left, they had spent $400 because of my interaction. And, and so again, like I said, we're working with that employee, but um, that's what interaction does. I mean, interaction sometimes will create a sale. Absolutely. It sounds like interaction and education, trying to understand the needs, what someone's trying to, to accomplish with their aquarium. And, and if I could get back to that, that first part, the first question what we were talking about, um, retention. It, when a customer walks into a business, they're in there to spend money. Easy to get that dollar, but how easy will it be to get the next dollar? You want to make them want to come back. So um, again, we have to do what we have to do to get the customer to come back. That's very important. Absolutely. Stacy, what would you say are the top three things getting in the way of people being successful with their aquariums? Mm, well, that's kind of that kind of follows the previous question. Um, let me let me let me put a different spin on it then. Um, I think perhaps maybe online experience, uh, some factors of online experience might be getting in the way. Um, and everybody will relate to this one. There's all kinds of dogmatic things out there that people insist on, believe in. They won't hear anything else. Um, they're just, you know, they won't, you know, it's earmuffed. Uh, so what, so when they get out into that online environment, um, it's who knows what, what can happen there. Uh, but it happens a lot. I will get, uh, usually my tech support calls come from somebody having purchased a blue shark product because another product they got did not work. And they're wondering what to do this time around with this product. Okay. That's usually the case. Um, that's that's what happened. So then I hear all the stories about this person said to do this here. I'll, I'll actually tell you a story. So in 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 the cycling process uh, with Colony, we always advise to use fish in the cycling process because it's going to work and nothing is going to happen to the fish. There's also another way that you can cycle called uh, fishless cycling. And the way fishless cycling works is you use uh, an ammonium chloride surrogate to fish waste. Okay, So you use that in the tank. And the bacteria will feed on that with no fish in there. And the idea is there's no, it won't harm any fish. We're getting it cycled. But I mean, in any, in any scenario, you're not going to have a problem using our product. Um, but the pro I'm, I, I would say 99%, easy 99%. I'm just, I'm just saying nothing's ever 100%. 
But when there is a tech support with Colony, it's always a fishless cycle situation. And the reason that is, is because they've been advised to use way too much ammonia in the fishless cycling situation. Our product is designed to cycle a tank with the little bits that come from fish and to process that in a situation that doesn't, this can go deep. I'm not going to go too deep, but if you have, if you end up with way too much nitrite all at once, it breaks the product. It, it breaks the rapid cycle process. So if you use too much ammonia, you're going to you're going to have way too much nitrite. Now you have a problem. So what the, when you do the small feeding and you follow the instructions on the product, we don't have this problem. So I would say probably dogmatic beliefs, um, bad advice. Um, there's also very good advice out there. I mean, you just have to hope you find it, you know, and, and everybody, everybody will attest to this. This is, this is, this is not a secret. So I would, I would attach that to my previous response and put those together. I think you have a pretty clear picture. Great. Frank K, I would uh, love to pose the next question to you. It sounds like you also have a thought to follow Stacy. Um, did you want to jump in with something? Um, well, I, I, I wanted to sort of reinforce what Stacy said when it comes to fishless cycling. Um, one of the things I found is, is, is that people are encouraged to add too much ammonia. I've had, I belong to a number of chat groups and blogs and, uh, uh, the, one of the biggest problems that we see is it has to do with cycling. I think that has a lot to do with the high dropout rate. But uh, when it comes to adding the ammonium chloride, I've had people that are already seeing nitrates. I mean, the tank is actually cycled. They're still adding ammonia to it, which <laughs> makes no sense. Uh, the fish should be added at that time. And that, that goes to Stacy's point where information that's online is often incorrect at worst, and it's inconsistent at best. I mean, it's really, I, th I think it really does pose a challenge because people will run to Google or Bing or whatever they're using and type in a problem, cloudy water, and you'll see you'll, you'll see 20 different answers from 20 different people about what, uh, what it possibly could be. Everything from their driftwood to a bacterial bloom to uh, the gravel wasn't rinsed. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's, there's just no, there, there's there's just not a lot of consistency. The other thing I wanted to add is, and 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 this is a little bit redundant from with what we've already talked about, but it's really the beginners that pose the greatest opportunities and the greatest challenge to the growth of the hobby. Um, if we retain more of them, the hobby is going to grow. Uh, as as, as uh, and Ken mentioned, dropout rate being over fifty percent. I don't know how many times I've I've heard or read someone say that they've been cycling their tank for thirty days. When can they add fish? And ask them, well, what? How have you been cycling your tank? Well, I have it set up, and I've got the filter running. Well, that's not cycling the tank. We all know we're we're trying to get a biological cycle going, but the the confusion out there about what a cycling an aquarium is, it's really uh, it's really really a challenge uh, to get that education out. And we've talked a lot about education today. That's really important. And obviously, there are products that are available to accomplish this in, in a week or less to get the cycle going. It's in my opinion, honestly. Um, the uh, uh, the colony product is is the best biological cycling product on the market. Of course, you'd want to treat the water prior to that with Paradigm if you've got chlorine in the water, and also to stimulate the appetite and uh, immuno immunological system of the fish. Another big beginner mistake is buying cheap and small. We all know where that leads to the beginner. Um, Frank touched on this earlier, uh, uh, is selling. Don't be afraid to sell. Don't be afraid to give the honest truth. Don't be timid about telling them that maybe you're gonna have to spend $2 more on this particular product to get a, a proper result. If you're talking about the tank, maybe you're gonna have to spend $100 more to get to, to be successful. So don't be timid about selling or, or at least giving that advice. You don't have to be a used car salesman, but you can give them the advice. And the last thing I'll add on, on this really is that the greatest asset that the dealer has in helping customers be more successful is the associates. And that goes back to the training, also incentive incentivizing the uh, the associates, uh, incentivizing them well. But uh, a lot of it goes back to the training and education that Frank's talked about and Stacy's talked about a lot and, and even Ken's touched on. So that's all I wanted to add to what Stacy was saying. Thank you. That's great context for everyone. I think we have time for one last question, which I will uh, ask Stacy. And the question is, how has Bluestream improved your relationship with your dealers, both in the U.S. and in the U.K.? Well, we're, uh, well um, yeah, we're just starting to get rolled out to the U.K. Um, as you guys know, we're opening this up uh, pretty soon worldwide here. Now, we work in an SMS capacity here in the United States. And so I think one of the great things is that it's it's 
we really want to build brand loyalty, not just with consumers, but with dealers too. I mean, you know, we have a lot of institutional use things, uh, store use things. We've got, um, you know, like in the presentation, we work with, you know, large entities with solving some really hard problems. Uh, we've done that for a very long time. So through our products, we want to build that, but we also want to make sure that we follow up with that and get them, help them get their customers back into their environment. And it's like, um, it's like when Ken was saying, you know, they, they don't want to make money until you're making money. Um, we're we're kind of the same way. We want to help you grow every category in your store. We want to help you get everything going. We don't do livestock or a whole bunch of categories, but we want to get this platform so you can adapt it so you can sell more of all of those things too. So we we want to be uh, like a, a, a point person in that whole formula. So that that's why we're developing all this and it's all for growth. Uh, but, you know, I actually have pictures of we're, we're opening this journey up to, and this is good because we have a lot of support and a lot of dealers in the UK. Uh, and we are opening this up to WhatsApp because SMS gets a little fishy when you start going from country to country, it gets a little uh, hard to connect. So we are opening up this up with WhatsApp, which is great. Uh, people will even be able to convert their journey from SMS if they want to switch over to WhatsApp even. And it's good because we have rich content, links will show up better, video will populate right there, you get better imagery. Um, I actually have a few uh, pictures of it right here. Let me uh, share this. Do you see this? And this is basically, this is the WhatsApp format. This is just some, some samples of, of the journey we were running through, just checking it to work. But yeah, we've got WhatsApp functionality and this is great for uh, the UK, European territory. Um, also, we've just opened up in Southeast Asia too. It's going to be great there. And um, yeah, we're really excited about the uh, the uh, switch um, or the, the option to, to roll with WhatsApp. Excellent. Well, thank you all for participating in the Q&A. Stacy and Ken, any final closing thoughts here? Sure. I'll just say um, anyone who would like to learn more, uh, we're delighted to work together. So Stacy and I have uh, access to show you how the data works, uh, look at more journeys, take a look at the templates, and then uh, help you uh, tailor the, the platform template so that they, they help your brand drive customers back to the store. We'd be delighted to do that. Uh, and yeah, just a, if a, anybody interested in uh, getting started, um, they can reach out to myself or uh, Frank Kudla. Um, to we get started motoring through this and start connecting with customers, what it's all about. Thanks, and, and before you... you 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 can you can find us at blue shark uh, blue shark trading co dot com would would be the website to hit for that. Excellent. Well, thank you all for your participation, and um, we'll be sharing the recording of this webinar later. And um, have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Hey, thank you so very much. Thank you.